Welcome back to Quotes Time. Today, we're stepping into the world of a music legend, Willie Nelson, to meet the souls who've shared his journey, his children. Join us as we explore the tales of love, music, and legacy that bind this extraordinary family together. Willie and his first wife, Matthews, welcomed their eldest daughter, Lana Nelson, on November 11, 1953. Lana had two sons from her first marriage before she remarried George Fowler in June 1976. The couple had a daughter, Rachel, and a son, Brian. Though Lana isn't a musician, she collaborated with her father by designing costumes for his 1986 movie, Red-Headed Stranger, which was inspired by his 1975 album of the same name. Lana is not only Willie's eldest daughter, but also one of his closest confidants, though less visible to the public eye. As for the origin of Willie's nickname, Shotgun Willie, it actually stems from an incident involving Lana. When Willie found out that Lana was being abused by her husband Steve, he drove straight to their house and confronted Steve. He made it clear to his son-in-law that he should never harm Lana again. Willie and Matthew's second child, Susie Nelson, was born on May 23, 1956. At the age of 27, she decided to return to school to earn her high school diploma and spent several years sharing music and stories on indigenous reservations in the U.S. and Canada. Susie Nelson has carved out her own path as an author. In 1987, she published an autobiography titled Heartworn Memories, a daughter's personal biography of Willie Nelson, offering a heartfelt tribute to her father and providing insight into what it's like to be his daughter. In 2012, Susie further expanded her career by co-hosting Susie's Gospel Hour with her dad on his Sirius XM channel, Willie's Roadhouse, showcasing her diverse talents and continuing her father's legacy in her own unique way. Willie and Matthew's first son, William Hugh Jr., born on May 12, 1958. Billy's life intertwined deeply with music, beginning with tours alongside his father. It was on one such tour that Billy met Janet Caldwell, a radio promo girl, in Nashville. They married, settled in the city, known for its musical heritage, and had a daughter, Raylan, who also followed the musical path. Tragically, Billy's life took a downturn 1989, with the death of his mother, coinciding with his separation from Caldwell, she gained custody of their daughter. Billy sought treatment for alcohol abuse in 1990, but his struggles overcame him, and he was found dead on Christmas Day, 1991, in Davidson County, Tennessee. His death was ruled a suicide by the medical examiner. Billy's passing marked a profoundly dark period in Willie Nelson's life, compounded by Nelson's acknowledgement of his absence during Billy's childhood due to career demands. Despite their time apart, they had recorded a duet shortly before Billy's death, highlighting Billy's talent. In a tribute to his late son, Willie Nelson released Peace in the Valley in 1994, a gospel album featuring songs Billy had written, showcasing his son's talent and preserving his memory through music. Willie Nelson's first child with Connie Kupke, Paula Carlene Nelson, was born on October 27, 1969. She was named after Willie's best friend, Paul English, and his wife, Carlene. At the time of Paula's birth, Willie was still married to his second wife, Shirley Colley. The marriage reached a critical point in 1971, when Colley found a hospital bill for Kupka. This revealed Willie's affair and Paula's birth, leading to Willie's divorce from Kali and his subsequent marriage to Kupke. Growing up, Paula faced the challenges of being Willie Nelson's daughter. This was particularly true after she moved to Austin, Texas, with her mother following her parents' divorce in 1988. Her high school years were tough, but she overcame these obstacles to become the first in the Nelson family to graduate from high school. Paula Carlene Nelson has paved her own way in the music scene, inspired by her father, Willie Nelson's legacy. She released her fifth studio album, Under the Influence, in 2014. Two years later, the Country Music Association of Texas recognized her as the Female Artist of the Year. Her collaborations with Willie have been notable. She sang on his 2013 cover album, To All the Girls, and he played guitar on her track, Primrose Path. Willie's support has played a pivotal role in Paula's career. He has consistently expressed pride in her accomplishments and provided encouragement. 
their shared love for music has fostered a deep, familial bond, enhancing both their personal relationship and professional collaborations. Amy Lee Nelson, born on July 6, 1973, to Willie Nelson and Connie Kupke, has made her mark in Hollywood and music. She directed the documentary Lovey, King of the Roadies, and appeared with her father in Saving America's Horses, A Nation Betrayed. Musically, she's part of Folk Uke, formed in 1998 with Kathy Guthrie. Beyond her artistic pursuits, Amy is dedicated to animal activism, contributing significantly to Willie's Kids, the Nelson family's nonprofit. She shares Willie's deep respect for animals, emphasizing his belief in their intelligence and the importance of treating them with kindness. According to Amy, her father's preference for horses over cars, humorously noting his better skills in riding than driving, reflects his unique values and the lessons he's imparted to his children. Lucas Autry Nelson, the first child of Willie Nelson and Annie D'Angelo, was born on December 25, 1988. He spent his childhood between Texas and Hawaii, starting his education at a Montessori school, run by his mother, before moving on to junior high and high school in Maui. From a young age, Lucas was drawn to music, a passion nurtured within his musically inclined family. This early interest led to one of his songs being featured on his father's album, It Always Will Be, when he was just 11. In 2007, Lucas relocated to Los Angeles to study at Loyola Marymount University. However, his commitment to music led him to drop out a year later to focus fully on his career. He formed Lucas Nelson and Promise of the Real, a rock band based in California. The band has enjoyed success, releasing their sixth album, A Few Stars Apart, in 2021, and serving as Neil Young's road band for several years, showcasing Lucas's dedication and talent in the music industry. The singer-songwriter has also collaborated with his father. Willie provided backup vocals and penned Peaceful Solution for Lucas and his band's debut album in 2010. Additionally, Lucas featured on Willie's 2012 album, Heroes. Together with his brother Micah, he joined their dad on tour on several occasions. For Willie's 90th birthday celebration, Lucas performed Angel Flying Too Close to the Ground as a tribute to his father's illustrious career and its profound influence on him. In 2020, Lucas earned a Grammy for his contributions to A Star is Born, coinciding with the night Willie received his 10th Grammy. Lucas's involvement included writing and co-producing several tracks for the film, acting on screen as part of Bradley Cooper's character's band, and serving as Cooper's vocal coach. Willie Nelson's youngest child, Jacob Micah Nelson, born on May 24, 1990, to him and D'Angelo, leads the band Particle Kid and frequently tours with his father and brother. Micah credits his dad as his inspiration and guiding light in music, admiring how Willie broke down barriers with fearless authenticity. This ethos motivated Micah to pursue his musical path with the same courage, embodying his father's legacy while forging his own. In June 2022, Willie and Micah collaborated on Die When I'm High, Halfway to Heaven, a song inspired by Willie's words during family time. Micah views this track as a tribute to his father, encapsulating love, respect, and a desire to honor Willie's influence without being confined by it. Performing it at Willie's 90th birthday celebration, Micah expressed deep appreciation for the familial bonds and musical heritage that have shaped his life and career. Willie Nelson discovered he had a daughter, Renee Butts, born to his friend Mary Haney on January 22, 1953, only in 2012, where he expressed joy in, I have an old dear friend, Mary Haney, who I'd lost touch with but recently met again after decades. Turns out Mary and I had a child together called Renee. It also turns out Renee has a daughter, Jordan, who I am happy to now call my great-granddaughter. Sadly, Renee passed away in August 2017, leaving behind a story of rediscovery and familial bonds that crossed decades. Thank you for joining us on this heartfelt journey. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Quotes Time for more stories that inspire, entertain, and touch the heart. Until next time, keep the music playing.